Hello RC fans, it's Tom again and I'm back with a couple of new things I want to talk about. One of them is this little DJI SE, uh, Mini SE, I think it's called, fun drone. I bought this off of Amazon after two previous drones that I bought off of Amazon had significant failures. One had a gimbal that wouldn't center up or level and the other one uh, the controller had a screen on it, and that screen went bad. And I sent them both back, and thank you, Amazon, for your no questions asked return policy. Uh, this one I've had about a month now, and I really, really like it. It's incredibly stable in the air, a lot of fun to fly, decent sort of uh, a video, not great, not definitely not high-end. It's only 20 frames a second think and uh, maybe 30 uh, and it you know as it rotates around you get a little jump in the video but if you really slow with it it's just fine uh, got a couple of videos of events that I've done it's just been fun to fly mainly second thing I want to review is this Hobby King glider the Hobby King walrus the backstory is that last Saturday, which I think was September 21st, I was at the AMA site over in Muncie for the National Fun Fly. And that was amazing in and of itself because of the airplanes that were there. They had a couple of uh, third scale World War I biplanes, absolutely identical. And the pilots flew those two things in formation. And I mean, we're talking loose formation, tight formation, they were, and put on an amazing show. Uh, and there were a lot of other things there. I, I flew a couple of airplanes myself, but nothing like what the demo of those guys put on with those World War I fighters. But the uh, Hobby King people were there, at least their distributor was there, and they were unloading a bunch of Hobby King models that had apparently been sitting around in their inventory for a while. And this walrus has now been superseded by the night walrus. Uh, so I paid him $70 in cash and walked away with this Hobby King walrus. <laughs> it's been an interesting experience coming from the E-Flight world to Hobby King. Uh, this airplane has had its challenges. Having said that, though, it really flies well but it took a lot more of an investment than I thought it would to get it flying. Uh, and there were some issues with assembling it. The biggest issue I had was that when I put a receiver in it and powered it up, I could not get the motor to turn off when I had throttle cut on. It would shut down properly with throttle cut thrown to off but as soon as I turned it on, it would power up to about 20% power. And I could not get the throttle adjusted, tried several methods to get that throttle set down to the point where the engine would shut off. Couldn't get it done. So finally, I switched over to switch the whole wiring set over to my Concendo. Uh, basically, I wired up the Concendo receiver an ESC to the motor in this walrus, and it worked perfectly. Conclusion was that if I'm going to use spectrum, transmitter, and receiver, I need to use a spectrum uh, ESC. So for $35, I bought a Concendo ESC and put it in here along with the new Spectrum 637T receiver, fully programmable, uh, powered it up and it works just fine. And it flies great. But that was about a $150 investment that I hadn't planned on making. I had a uh, an older Spectrum spare receiver that uh, was not quite as capable as I really wanted. So that's why I put the 637 in. The ESC wasn't a big deal. <clears throat> and I didn't really have to do the receiver, but I decided to anyway. 
So let's talk about some of the issues with this aircraft in particular and some of the things I had to do in setup to get it working properly. So one issue was this propeller. And it was an issue because out of the box, these blades were not freely floating. These blades were binding to the point where if you put it up in the air, they would not fold back like that when you shut the power off. So the first thing I had to do was take these propeller blades off, take them out to my bench grinder and grind some off, maybe half a millimeter off of these hubs. For me at least, one of the most challenging issues that I ran into was the fact that the airplane came with no instruction manual. I mean, you can get one online, but if you get the one online, it doesn't tell you how to mount the battery because it doesn't come with a battery tray or any kind of battery fast down. So I decided to just use Velcro, at least to start with, and so I put some of this black Velcro that came with the model in the bottom of the fuselage and use the rest of it to mount the ESC up there on the side. And because the fuselage here has a bow to it, the ESC gets airflow all around it. And flying it the other day, I didn't get any heat buildup to speak of in the ESC. So I've got everything hooked up here, including the transmitter. And you can see there's the receiver in the back, and you can probably hear the telemetry coming across. Uh, the 637T comes with a built-in variometer, which I've got connected up. And I'm just going to reach over here and turn that volume down all the way. And this raises another issue, and that is weight and balance. According to the manufacturer, you're to use a 2200 3S battery in this airplane, but the only way to do that is to mount it on edge between the servos, which I wasn't very happy with, and put the receiver way in the back. So I have elected instead to go with a 1300 Smart Pack. This is a Gen 2, and fasten it in with the Velcro. And when you get it fastened in, it looks like this, and the model balances perfectly with that configuration. I mounted the receiver with the leads in the back to make more room for the battery. And it also keeps the bind button up in front where you can get to it. I have had an issue with this particular setup with it losing binding. So I've had to rebind it once already. So having that bind button there is really handy. Okay, let's go through the transmitter NX8 settings. This is the home page, obviously. The airplane's powered up, the battery's in it. First thing we're going to do is look at DR and Expo. And the rates I'm using here are the same as the rates I have on my Kachindo. The ailerons and are set to 50%. 70% or 100% with 20% Expo on all three switches. Same as my Congendo, and they work very well. Throttle cut is over here on switch D. And up is go and down is off. Very logical. No throttle curve. Flap system. The flaps I set... Now, this is peculiar, but 85% on this airplane seems to be flaps up. And originally, uh, the way it was configured, I either had to reverse the flap servos or set up these positions custom. So I just I didn't reverse the flap servos because when I put the flaps down, the first time the flaps went up instead of down. So... I just set the flaps to where I wanted them and 85% levels them with the uh, ailerons and elevator at zero, 
with the flaps halfway down, the elevator comes down 25%, and at position 0, 50% flaps, I get 40%, I use 40% elevator to keep it from ballooning, and it lands very nicely and very slowly and under total control with that setting. It's really, really, really works well. I got that off actually off of somebody else's video, but they, that setting will work great. Mixing, I put in some mixes. I put in an aileron rudder mix. If you don't know anything about sailplanes, but those ailerons way out there on the wings, those long thin wings, ailerons create a lot of adverse yaw. And to correct for that, you need to step on the rudder. If you've ever flown a full-scale airplane, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have to coordinate the controls. So I automated this. And I set it up. Oh, let's go back here to curve one, or curve zero. Aileron rudder on all three flight modes on switch B are set to 30% left and right as I move the ailerons, the rudder is moving with the ailerons, which gives me a nice coordinated turn. And I've got throttle elevator set up as well. And the rates I used are 12 and 20. Power, let's see, yep, power's off. And that moves the elevator down. With this setting, I get level flight at all power settings. As I move the, ele move the elevator down and the power up, it's nicely coordinated. I don't need a lot of elevator to correct for speed. However, if you're going full throttle and you chop the throttle, that excess speed you've built up will result in a significant ballooning of the airplane. You've, you're creating a lot of lift and all of a sudden that elevator comes out, then that airplane's going to climb. I did a full range test, all four directions at uh, 30 paces, and it passed. I've got some drops, but I got no holes. Telemetry, I set up the variometer to be on at all times, regardless of any switch settings. The smart ESC to give me status reports on voltage every 60 seconds and warning reports every 10 seconds using the standard 3.5 volts per cell trigger for the alarms. No changes on the smart battery. Altitude, the 637T comes with a built-in altimeter. I set the warning at 400 feet. And let's see, I think that's it. That's all the settings I changed or had to tweak. Forward programming. Oops. Let's go back to forward programming. Here we go. I gyro went to gyro settings. I set a flight mode on switch B. Three flight modes. And I used that channel to turn AS3X and safe on and off. It's currently in all gyros off. So you can see that safe is off, AS3X is off, panic is inhibited, everything. Now if I move the switch one position to flight mode two, AS3X is active. And if I move it to flight mode one, safe is active at self-level angle, and AS3X is inhibited. And I like it over here on the B switch because it's really handy. I got my hand on the throttle. I can Move the throttle, and I've got it right here. I've always got my hand on the throttle. And if something starts going wrong, I just flip just like that, and I um, can save an airplane, maybe. I had to, of course, because it's the T model of the 637, I had to go through the system setup, flight mode setup, 
to get it cor oriented correctly, but uh, that's pretty easy to do. And uh, Miguel Ad Alvarez shows you how in a really good video series that he's got on this particular receiver. And I'll put a link to that in the description. And that, other than binding it, that was it. Like I said, with those settings, this model flies really, really well. It's been a bit of a pain to get it together, but uh, I really like the way it flies. So I'll close out with that. If you ever come across one of these, uh, just be aware that you're going to have some issues with it, and you're going to need to deal with those issues. So have a great summer flying, and I hope to be talking to you again real soon with a in-flight demo of this little walrus. Goodbye.